Um, well, it must be going to be a good conversation because the tech goonies are already out. So, uh, Maisha, how are you? <laughs> I am challenged but inspired. That's how I am. <laughs> it's great. Drinking water, minding my business, feeling good. <laughs> Olivia got it. Water too. <laughs> That's all that's in here. Until Welcome later. to Permission to Be, everybody. I love being on this podcast with y'all. It's like my favorite <laughs> thing to do. Hello and welcome to Permission to Be. Let's hit him with the remix. Oh, well, y'all got to change yes. that. Yes. What are we doing? Uh, we, we leave our f bombs in and... Let's tell some stories. As long as white people are bound, the people in power are bound, they're going to keep us bound to the same thing that they're bound to. Out of, out of, the, out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks, that I think out of the overflow of the spirit, the body does. Countless narratives. Why, why is that the best that God could offer you? Mike made it very clear that he did not want to get any of these questions beforehand. So he is getting this question live, raw, for the very first time. This is, um, yeah. and I feel like art is the expression of the heart where uh, words fail. Oh my goodness, I have tears. Oh, you all are killing it. Unfiltered. I feel like that's got to sound strange. Permission to be. Uh, actually, my 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 literary agent, when we were talking about what book might I write, he was like, I mean, A Black Man with Hope is an interesting book. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> oh. I've never said it to y'all before. It's just show up, be fully human, permission to be. Duh. But yeah, I, yeah. I love being on here with you guys. Uh, it's the ultimate water bottle. <gasps> How many ounces is, is that? that? It's like... I mean, that looks like a gallon. Is it a gallon? I think it's a gallon. <gasps> wow. I'm, That's so good. I'm inspired. That is so good. Oh, no. It's been in my closet for like a month. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to so say, I'm challenged. And, like, it's cool because my, my my volunteers gave it to me and then they like made sure if I went for a walk, I can like wear it like a purse. <gasps> and yeah. it's insulated too. Yes. So let's do an image description of what we're talking about so the audience <laughs> yeah, knows. Right. Right. <laughs> Perfect. right now we're talking about a teal water bottle with, uh, that's about one gallon that has a cream and red top that twists on. When you open it up, the straw, there's a little pop doohickey. My visual <laughs> description is the best I can. <laughs> and it pops open and you can also shut it. It also has on a lanyard that has, um, what's it called again, Becca? Oh, uh, like an uh, insulator. It has, it's like sitting, so it won't, it'll keep it cold and it won't, the sweat won't drip everywhere. And Yes, it has a fuchsia insulator with times that you're supposed to do this from 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. Uh, in white. The reality is I don't do this every day. I do my best. Good for you. Because <laughs> it's not about perfection. It's about moving forward healing your way forward yes and we heal forward through practice so we're practicing hydrating ourselves there you go there you go there it is we're gonna wrap we're gonna wrap (laughs) friends today we have back yes i love i love truly we are we're having friends come back this i remember setting the intention of like building mm-hmm. relationships when we were like, how do we want to choose who we interview? And uh it's it's affirmation, it's work, it's the practice. And mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. But friends, today we have Maisha T. Hill. If you don't know her, um, we interviewed her uh, I think it was last year. So make sure you check yeah. out that yeah. episode. Mm-hmm. Season three. Um, but Maisha is a mental health activist, a speaker, an entrepreneur, and now an author with a book. Oh no, out. no, she's oh she's got more than one book. She got more oh, than one book. Wait, what are the, I'm oh my goodness, more than oh, one yeah, book. Oh yeah, tell me I have like oh man. Okay, listen, y'all. My first book is called The Business of Plus. How to start a plus size fashion business. 
I wrote it two weeks after leaving a mental health hospital. It's it's horrible, but I leave it there for myself. But, yes. but that's your starting. You that's started. my starting. Like yes. I taught myself yes. how to self-publish on Amazon. And then there it is. Olivia's got them. Check your privilege. Heard- live into the work. I totally, to discomfort. Yes. I made a gratitude journal that nobody knows about called Hella Grateful. <laughs> I have a workbook that I used to use with my life and business coaching clients called the Synergy Workbook. And then I have a, another workbook called Niche Down Your Journey. I love a good notebook and a mm. journal. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Maybe that's Will Your Way Forward journal. Oh, oh, easy. Yeah. I mean, not easy, but like definitely no brainer. Well, I think that's you want to write it with me? Sure. Yes. Yes, absolutely. I'm yes. serious. I'm dead serious. Are you with me? Yes. I mean, yes. <laughs> just talk, I mean, I'm excited to talk about it. Yes. But, but okay. like, okay, so I was just thinking, I was like, I just got excited and that, overwhelmed all at the same time. That, Sorry, Tommy. I, that, oh, no, 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 you're great. You're, there was that like overwhelming, crushing fear of like when my brain forgets something that I feel like is really important and I should know with my friends. But I, and I was like, also, this is highlighting the problem with like introductions and collapsing ourselves into identities you've been an Mm -hmm. author (laughs) Mm -hmm. and I was just like oh wow what an opportunity to like just punt this out there and talk about the complexities of being which I think Mm -hmm. really centers us on your latest gift to the world heal your way forward yeah well you know they they this is my seminal work. And I had to Google seminal because I'm like, what What does that even mean? Oh, yeah. Actually, remind us. <laughs> <laughs> ah. I'm serious. Thanks. Thank you, Tommy. You're human. Like, it is, okay. You know, I have books out. You didn't remember. You forgot. We're human. <laughs> true. True story. 100% fully, fully human. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. forgot what I was saying. This is about what does civil mean? Okay, so it's like, hold on, let me Google it again because I forgot. I, I can't <laughs> think of it off the top of my head. Just, it means to strongly, to strongly influence, like something that strongly influences your work or that strongly influences your message. Um, Thank you. Or well, the other definition well, is there's another definition that I knew that wasn't what you meant. <laughs> Fine, I'm gonna read the other one. <laughs> Because I wanted to say it so bad just to get a laugh. Yes, I know the other one too. <laughs> Not appropriate, but yes. Oh, yes. Yeah, oh, say it. This podcast is fine with that. No, Google it. No. Okay. Oh, okay. Well, it's like my it's first. Related like, to or, but anyway, I'll, I'll, I'll let you look it up so you can be amused. <laughs> um, it's like my first major work, like with a, it's distributed by Simon and Schuster versus like print on demand through Ingram Spark. Mm-hmm. Which is what we do for self publishing. Okay. Um, so yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I just so, googled. So you just <laughs> found the other. You just found the other meaning. <laughs> I mean, I if just the context of the words, my brain has already filled it in. Anyway, <laughs> I love that we always have at least one. I don't even want to call it immature, but like I'm using immature here to associate it with like a childlike joy like that. Yeah. You know, like last time I think it was something about your butt or I don't know. We, there it was, was something. something. <laughs> it was a good time. Did she ever take life serious? No. <laughs> what? We live like under the regime of all these systems. Like, why should we be serious all the time? Oh, yeah. I just came out of a really like serious moment because I'm like compiling this report for one of my contracts. And, you know, I take my work seriously for sure. But then like I come into spaces and moments like this and what I'm sensing in this moment is um, when I'm serious, um, that's usually accompanied with a sense of like loneliness I'm realizing for myself. Oh, wow. And 
the like just being laughing and joyful in this space already like i feel that sense of loneliness that i've learned to identify it's like dissipating away mm-hmm. and so just the power of the levity of changing the energy mm-hmm. in a space can be so profound and impactful mm-hmm. thank you for that you're welcome mm. that was deep <laughs> that was <laughs> In all the best ways. Like, yeah, because it's like, Tommy, you just went from like hyper focus and like individualism to like now you're in community and joy and being seen. Like, that's the beauty of community. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yes. Oh, that's a word. That's a word. Today it is. Yes. <sighs> so. What do you want to talk about today? I think I guess I guess we're obligated to for your publisher to talk about your book again. Heal your way yeah, forward. Yeah, we're obligated to talk about heal your way forward. The <laughs> obligated. You know, pick a different word. Pick a different word. You know, we're gonna talk about heal your way forward. What it means. You know, you guys, let's just have a conversation. Yeah. 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 Oh so, my goodness. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Tommy. No, I've been. I've been blabbering so <laughs> i would love to share space olivia or becca what are, what are your curiosities around like so transparently well i won't speak for oh, becca but i will speak for me you know Olivia. <laughs> we haven't read the book <laughs> yet it's on my list of items to That's read okay. so i get to come into the conversation with uh a blank can- canvas and I'm really excited um, to know like to use this tool and because we work we share space in similar spaces as we think about our healing work um, so I was curious Becca and Olivia what are your curiosities about Heal Your Way Forward? I don't have a specific curiosity. I'd just like to hear Maisha give us a general overview, like from her perspective, if you had to say, this book is primarily about. This book is primarily about essentially taking your own hero's journey. Mm-hmm. It's about taking that practice of, I'm going to take this incredible journey. I'm mixing up a book and a movie now. That's okay. <laughs> it takes you through what I call the co-conspirator's journey, which is listening, learning, uh, taking action, uh, shame, aversion, recommitment, and it's just the upward spiral. It just goes on and on and on. So it basically walks folks through what I call that co-conspirator's journey, what's required before you take that step. It moves on to the great white awakening, referencing like George Floyd and other instances of awakening. Um, Then we go to grief, because what I've learned in these last few years is that what happens is that we go more into that intellectual mind. Yeah. And then we get stuck in our head, but there's trauma in our bodies because we're not grieving and ritualizing and letting go. And so the book walks you through awakening, grieving, listening, learning, taking action, but not performing. Um, The sweet spot of shame and vulnerability. Shout out to my therapist who calls it the sweet spot. I was like, I will let you know, put that in my book. He's like, okay, great. It's not mine. (laughs) Um, Recommitting. Um, relationships in the reparative future, like how what, what do we want the world to look like in seven generations? Mm. So essentially, it's you know we're calling it part memoir, part part guide because I knew that it was important in this book that I shared elements of my own story that could connect to the person on the other end, right? Yeah. So yeah. because when you see yourself in anybody's story, you're like, oh, I can connect to that. That relates. Mm. Um, but it's really about taking that journey and staying committed and really mm. pondering like. What what do I want to be a part of seven generations? What's my legacy? What are my children's 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 or if you don't have children? What are the people who I want to inspire? Like, what's the legacy? Like, if they opened up a history book, if they found one of my old journals, what do I want them to know? Mm-hmm. And so this goal of, like, heal your way forward is, like, getting to that answer of, hey, if I stay on, the, stay on track, well, that's not actually part of it. But if I stay in process and in practice... And commitment and committed to it, like I can definitely leave a legacy of healing and not a legacy of shame and harm. Mm-hmm. 
Okay, so I want to, well, something that stood out to me, from what, you've mentioned seventh generation a couple of times. And so one of my dear friends is um, Indigenous American, and she has t- t- taken me through this, taking me to school on what seventh generation means to her tribe and the significance yeah. of that. Um, what, what prompted that for you or what made you think seven generations forward? Was there something specific behind that? Because for them, that seven generations is like a whole thing. Um, and so that just leaped out at me. I'm curious about that. Yeah. So for me, you know, it's, I brought, I used the Sankofa in the book, which is, you know, from the Akan tribe in Ghana, which is essentially a bird that is walking forward, but looks behind because when you look behind, there's lessons to pull out that could actually set the path to, as you walk forward. Um, and so it's actually, when you hear seven generations, it does come from indigenous culture, Um, It's also known as seven generation stewardship, which is basically our current generation needs to live and work to benefit seven generations forward. But in order for me to move forward, and this is rooted in indigenous knowing, specifically the Iroquois. And in order for me to go seven generations forward, I knew I had to look backwards. And this comes from, I believe I share in the book, when I was in therapy, when I was pregnant with my daughter, the therapist had me create what was called a genogram. Mm -hmm that right yeah. yeah yeah and it's essentially like a picture of like your parents their parents as far back as you can your aunts your uncles your kids and in this picture you identify who was married who was divorced uh mental health diagnoses who was the single parent and it was there that I looked at the type like for me at that moment it was single parenthood I was a seventh generation single mom mm. but when you go back seven women in my family there are seven generations of single moms all the way back to the ancestor who was assaulted by my my grandfather, right? Because he assaulted her and that's how thus my bloodline came into being on my mother's side. Um, And I recognized, my therapist said, do you see a pattern? I was like, yeah, everyone's like married. People are entrepreneurs. Like I've pulled out all the demons. And then he's like, you know, it stops with you. You can have a different future outcome. And that was a powerful moment because I'm like, well, if we all just looked at, look back the same way, make a picture, look at all the things, pull out where the trauma came from. And one thing I I learned last week, actually, in real time was you never really heal trauma. You just learn how to practice the healing. So for me, it's been what does it look like for me to heal that trauma, begin that journey so that in seven generations, that trauma doesn't continue. Right. And so if we think about these systems of domination on the for white folks specifically, power is a trauma. Yes. Having power over people is trauma. Um, privilege. Like there's so many different facets of it. Like I could go really deep <laughs> and, and wide, but to bring it back in, for me, it was coming from that indigenous wisdom of okay, how do we want the world to look seven generations forward, but with Sankofa bringing in that that African concept for me. But what did it look like back then? Because there's got to be something that I got to heal up. I mean, when you look at my genogram, guys, there's ADHD, there's autism, there's major depressive disorder, there's a family of teachers. I come from a bloodline of educators, pastors, Mm. preachers. Say um, that, yes, yes. And I wouldn't know that if I didn't look back. Mm. But then within that, even though there's all that power, I still got to deal with the slave master in my bloodline, my mm. anger, Ooh. violence. Can we just say with that for a second? Whew. My anti-blackness. <sighs> anti-blackness is not just because I was socialized around white folks. It's in my bloodline. Because in order for you to be a white person and beat black folk into submission or assault black folk, that's in my bloodline. You did that. My great, 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 you know, grandmother was created, right? And it yeah. just comes and comes and comes. And another example I can use real quick, y'all, is, you know, when my grandmother was my mom's mom. I believe she had to be like between seven and 11. She saw her cousin drown in a river and went selectively mute. And then if you know my story about being undiagnosed, autistic, you know, I was selectively mute. My daughter was selectively mute. Okay, we got to heal four. What does that mean? Okay, baby girl, you need speech therapy. 
We need to know about communication skills, something I still have to go to that I haven't signed up for yet because I'm healing my way forward. But in practice, in theory, I need to go to communication. I need to go to speech because it can, that's how I heal myself so that if they see me going to therapy, if they see me eating healthy, healing my way forward, they'll pick up those behaviors and not just, they've picked up a lot of my negative behaviors, but you don't know what you don't know. And like my Angelo says, when you know better, you do better. Mm. That was a whole word. That, that, was, so that, that was a chill bus. That, <laughs> that, was, was, that was so deep. Um, and, and when you said Iroquois, my, my sister friend, um, she her her tribe is part of the Iroquois Confederacy. So that just, I was just like, yep, that's where it came from. You're dead on the money. Um, that is just so deep. So now I'm going to get off this computer. <laughs> and go, um, <laughs> I, just, I just realized something that I knew, but forgot I was we're moving and we've got all this stuff everywhere and I found this newspaper clipping of my father's mother so we're not talking about somebody far removed um but she was a journalist she had her own column in the Gadsden Alabama Times so I've been obsessed with writing my whole life and she died when I was in elementary school and I forgot about it until I found this newspaper clipping um a few weeks ago and so everything you're saying is just like okay well what other writers were in there? Like, I, I got to go do some research now. I think that is so deep and you see the patterns. Um, and then now you're putting forth this message on how to disrupt so, such that the, the generational past does not have to be the generational future. Yeah. That is- As you were talking about your, your grandmother, Olivia, sorry to cut you off. Okay. I think about my grandmother was a writer who wrote poems and... She has, my mom has so many of her poems that need to be published. And when I was younger, she, when we moved to come to the, to the white area, I remember she has a poem called black is a lovely color and it is so powerful. And then she illustrated a picture. So then I'm thinking about my daughter who likes to draw. It's all so deep. Sorry, Olivia. No, no. Like I said, I'm having a whole moment over here. Like, wow. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah. It brings tears to my eyes because we live in a culture that makes us afraid of ourselves and or perpetuates that, that, you know, like this, well, let me rephrase that. Let me just take a couple steps back. The Christian white culture makes us afraid of ourselves. And for those of us who are raised in it, I don't want to generalize it. For those of us who are raised, it makes us afraid of ourselves. And we can't heal our way forward unless we are willing to see ourselves. Mm-hmm. And and you have taught me so much about that. And it just everything, like the last three minutes of conversation, I'm just like, it's 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 just so beautiful, and it's available to us in different aspects and different ways. Not all of us have resources to go to therapy, but there's also community if we choose to step into that. And there's just so many possibilities. Like, it just makes me want to scream at the possibilities. And we don't, we don't hunger for it. Not everybody hungers for it. No, we don't hunger for possibility because we don't tap into our creativity, our imagination or play, right? And so if we're not tapping into that, which is connected to the matriarchal energy or the childlike energy, we just, we're just doing what white supremacy wants us to do. Produce, consume, (laughs) produce and consume and and stay disconnected from the heart space. Mm. Uh, I'm just, I'm just noticing how like my body is, is reacting to to the flow of the conversation and in the depth um i got really excited when you talked about sankofa and pulling that african indigenous knowledge and um merging it with the knowledge of the iroquois and i'm just sitting here struck by i think we mentioned you know community earlier and just struck by this moment of community that we're engaged in the practice of tying that to sort of this 
disruption from that capitalist system that keeps us disconnected from one another. You know, you've had check your privilege and the co-conspirator sounds for two, three years now, almost. And you're teaching people, you're journeying alongside people. And we were just talking earlier today, and I'm in this place of I'm thinking about sort of the things that I'm healing. Part of my healing, why I keep naming like what's happening in my body is that's how I'm in this season healing my way forward like it being okay to feel it being okay to have emotions and to express Mm -hmm. those emotions Um, I'm in this season of elder care with my dad and we're having these really really tender moments where we're both we're both identifying patterns but he's at a different stage of life he's he's closer to transitioning back you know, and and so is I'm thinking about the specialness of, of you know us sharing the black identity um, and being able to have these conversations about healing. But I'm struck by like again, like I'm always like people are like, well, what do, what is it that I do? And I think it really is simple as sitting with each other and having conversations that open you up. Um, I mean, and, and so like, that's sort of how I'm processing through and like, but also I just need to compliment you on, on your pedagogy. Like, yes. Like, (laughs) it's it's like wisdom from the ancestors. Yes. You are a channel. You are channeling, you are channeling and it is so beautiful. And it's so interesting because I remember I don't think it was you, Becca, but I remember I got a message and the person, it reminded me of you, Becca. I think it was like from last time we talked on the podcast. I think it was. And you were like, do you realize you channel live? And I'm like, I have no idea what you're talking about. But then I started to notice when I'm live, it's like an energy. It's like, it's like, you you can catch it and you can see it. And you're like, oh, who's this person right now? And you're right. I'm, I'm, thank you for noticing that in me. Tommy, all of you, and thank you for calling that out because I never knew what it was called. I just called it energy, that it just takes over. Then now I'm learning like, okay, now I need to know when to allow it in because what will happen is it'll take over and you guys will be like, wow. <laughs> need to go, go have a shot of some 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 water, a shot of water. <laughs> Shout out to AA. I'm, I'm working on my AA game. Um, Good for you. Yeah, that's part of healing my way forward. Alcohol is definitely played like a big role in my personal journey. I don't think I wrote about it in this book, but yeah. Mm. Mm. There's so much. There's so like, I think we, I was just noticing that like we we're catching ourselves more on like the generalizations that, that we make. And I think that's also a part of like healing our way forward. We're able to like, because we're inviting in a clarity of yeah. what are the things Right. And I'm I'm just really appreciative of your bravery in this particular moment to even name like, oh, I'm I'm having to like name all the things, the the, the uh, my relationship to alcohol. And mm-hmm. what are I guess I want to invite some conversation about like what are like let's talk about that like let's kind of go there if, if we yeah. have time to 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 go into um not not to exploit the trauma, but really to talk about it in a way that we're holding like this is why I have to to go back to go forward. <laughs> yeah. You know, I started in high school, you know. Shout out to my mom who's gonna listen to this and be like, What? <laughs> or say, I knew you was doing something, girl. You had too much going on. So it'll be something like that. But um yeah, I was in high school, my friends so June started junior year. They would uh, come with the clear. They're like, it's just water. That's how they got me at first. Yeah. It's just water. And so I'm like, what is this? And they're like, oh, you love it. You're going to focus in class. You know, you fall for all the, the stuff they say, right? Yeah. 
Yeah, guys, it was, it started then. And then when I got 18, it got progressively worse between 18 and to about 22, stopped. I recognized that I'm also a child of an alcoholic, mm. um, stopped, had my, you know, did my party phase, found out I was pregnant. I stopped, did another party phase, found that I was pregnant. I stopped. So it's just always like stressors. Yeah were the contributing factor for me, like being a single mom and wine o'clock was like when COVID started, wine o'clock was every day, wine o'clock in Malibu. And that's when I started to be like, okay, I think I have a problem. Like there's a connection here that I need to visit. And I met a woman online named Courtney Olson um, who shared her story of how she started her business and how her recovery came with her fitness and wellness and she's actually been holding me accountable, like making sure like, hey, if you feel like you need to have a drink, just send me a text. She'll text me through it. And it's mm. been like, we celebrate. I think today is like day 10. Yay. Mm. That's amazing. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And it's, it's you know, I, I've joined like sober black girls. I'm like, I'm coming, I'm coming. And they've just been so like, we're here when you're ready. Like, don't, don't, don't beat yourself up. But that's the part of community and accountability that matters, right? Where we have mm-hmm. Courtney who holds me accountable to it, my family, because it was a vice. It was a way for me to disconnect with reality. It was a way it was a way for me to not have to navigate and like deal with my emotions, mm-hmm. right? It was escape from reality. I mean, I think, you know, check your privileges going on four and a half, almost five years now. And I think you know how I think I tell people I worked from the moment George Floyd was murdered until last year, like last December. And what kept me engaged in the conversations, I would end my live and go have a drink. Mm-hmm. Go to sleep, wake up, do it again. Work, 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 have a drink, go to sleep, do it again. I mean, holiday, December of 2021 or 2020, you guys are seeing that. You know, that was in that coffee cup in all my reels and in like all my lives in the morning. That was coffee with Bailey's. Mm. But I can name that now because I'm healing yeah. my way forward. And not to say shame anybody who has who does that. Like I'm not casting judgment, but for me, it's like okay, I'm doing a little too much. And you know, here recently, you know, families just really been committed to staying healthy, getting yeah. healthy, getting older. You know. Yeah. But just when I think about like. I just have such a new take on addiction with the studies that I've done with embodiment and uh, Mm -hmm. and the conversations that we've been able to have here on the podcast and the relationships and, you know, there's just such compassion, right? Like I think about my relationship to marijuana often, right? I'm in constant negotiation about uh, that if, if, if I'm too reliant on it. And to some degree, I probably could say that I am because we're numbing we're in this system that is so painful at times and we're looking for ways to cope you know and so there's such compassion and in your own healing you're setting a guide that you know I think I'm appreciative of things like AA and NA, but I still think that they're very lacking in um, in some way, in some philosophies, in in some ways for some people. Right. Um, But this this healing that gets at the root, this healing that involves community. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. I just hold that so tenderly and thank you for, again, for just like being courageous, leading out mm. courageously. You, you are an example to me and I'm just like, wow, wow. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. And what I love about it is you are an example. And if something changes tomorrow and you take a different path, you're still an example, Mm -hmm. you know, Mm -hmm. like that doesn't, this example of thinking when we, we have to change our mindset of, well, I have this example and they're going to do this forever perfectly. No, no, no. That's you making an idol out of an example. Like that's not, that's not real. That's not community. That's pedestaling someone who is not going to live up to your expectations because we're all freaking human beings. Yeah. You know, 
an example, I think that's we have to change that concept of this is gratitude for this moment, this space and time, and there'll be different gratitudes for different days. But don't hold the gratitude. So I'm, y'all, um, listening. I'm making fists and letting go with my fingers. I just realized what I'm doing. But just letting go and not holding on to. This was my example and my hope because it's gonna change because we evolve. And so, thank you, Maisha, for teaching us how we evolve and learn. And thank you, like Tommy said, for just being real and being willing to share. Yeah. One of the things that caught me, though, is when you were talking about, like, your first time with alcohol, what struck me about that was, like, the consent violation. <laughs> and, and, the, and also how we use humor to to kind of put, to peer pressure people, to, to push ideas and opinions onto people. But really, when we sort of peel back that layer is a consent violation. It's an agency violation. And in your case, it was this like catalyst or trigger into something that became a, a coping mechanism in various seasons of life. Ooh. I just wanted to talk about that concept of like how when we practice consent, we're also engaged in another form of healing and agency yeah. affirmation. It, consent is such a, like a, it's not sticky. It's just such a, a topic that like, I would say I'm still learning about and normalizing, right, in my life. Mm -hmm. um, and you're right. Like we do make consent humorous. Like, oh girl, you'll be fine. Just do it. <laughs> and I think it's just, Tommy, we don't understand like, consent violations I don't think we again like I said I'm still learning for myself but we don't name it as that like we oftentimes when you have conversations on consent it's like oh sexual violence right yeah. or like you know sexual violence of any yeah. form but to think about it even in conversations with friends and community like even humor as consent it's pretty deep I'm sitting with that I feel it right here too mm -hmm. Mm. I just I just wanted to uh, I just wanted to name that for that reason because I think it deserves to be acknowledged as you know it wasn't <laughs> especially as I'm cultivating this relationship with plant medicine and often am in spaces where others are curious about it consent is really mm -hmm. important <laughs> Are the medicines that we use can heal us when out of balance, so yeah. they can create harm. Yeah, I mean, well. that's so real. Like, when I think of me and cannabis, and like, here, even recently, like having to cancel my whole day because I was just like, so, whoa, I'm doing way too much. Like, you know how you just are not in your body? <laughs> But it's like I, I didn't mm -hmm. check in with myself. So if I'm, not, if I'm thinking of consent in the right way, now I'm like, what am I consenting for myself? Ooh. Oh, 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 oh. Ooh. Oh. Because here's the thing in my work, what I've learned talking about anti-racism and oppression, we always go out. What are you? You've done this. You've done this. But what am I consenting to myself? Right. That's isn't that isn't like negative consent. Self-consent could be a form of self-harm, which can take us, Tommy, into the mental health conversation. Um, but to your point, yeah. like. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. The interdependence of boundaries and consent and its dance to support mm -hmm. positive mental health or yeah. negative mental health. Yep. Wow, I, I just like, ooh. Yeah. The other thing that, that just stood out to me about it, separate and apart from the consent, was the, the whole transparency and vulnerability aspect of it. Um, especially when you have a big platform or influencer, there can just be a lot of pressure to maintain a certain image. 
that may or may not comport with reality. Um, and so I just have an appreciation for someone who can say, I've done this, I've accomplished this, I've written this book, I'm teaching on this, and I'm still having issues and struggles like regular people <laughs> as well. I, I just, I, I have, a, as I age, <laughs> since I'm like the senior citizen here. <laughs> Give it a rest. <laughs> um, my um, my appreciation for that has increased mm-hmm. exponentially. Thank you. I appreciate that. I think that's one of the things that my partner, you know, he saw me moving away from the intention of check your privilege and he had to check me like, you are not that person. Like, come back down to earth because you are not. I was starting at one point to turn into like, a prima donna. And that's not who I am, Olympia. So I appreciate you seeing me in that way. I am just like a normal, everyday person with lived experience, who teaches from lived experience. I'm not any better than anybody else. And that's the danger of influencer culture. Yeah. It can have you, it, a blue check. Oh, Lord. Your ego to a whole nother level. I mean, I think we've seen so many videos of people saying, Do you know who I am? I'm a blue check. And you're like, And, you know, so, yeah, thanks, Olivia. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. I think that's such a conversation to have, too. And um, just because when we think about the tools of communication, right, and social media is there. And how do we do the work? And not saying that everybody has to be on social media to do the work, but there is like you know, we can, we can study sort of the, the platformed figures of the various movements, right? And there has to be, I think we have to look at what capitalism structures us into, um, celebrity culture, uh, influencer culture, (laughs) right? And contrast that to, I was coming as I want to use the term leader um and i think that's appropriate right because we do need leaders in this movement but i think that leader sometimes gets confused with celebrity and i was just curious if you wanted to kind of yeah i mean about that a little bit leader does get influenced influ- influenced by celebrity but what i love about for example dr ibram kendi he was a professor he was a leader prior to you know, his book stamped from the beginning, getting picked up by like CBS, and he still remains humble as a leader, right? Mm-hmm. Um, leadership and public figure, whether mm-hmm. it's influencer, I believe it has the same responsibility, right, Tommy? I think it's one and the same, because if you are a person of influence, yeah. technically you are a leader. But there's a danger when you mm-hmm. have white supremacy being unnamed and you're a leader, right? Right. When you're upholding capitalism and you're a leader, when you're upholding ableism and you're a leader. For those of you who didn't see me, I just took my fingers and did air quotes when I said, I think, leader or influencer. Um, There's a connection there, Tommy. I'd love to hear what you have to say. There's definitely a connection between leadership and influencers because we've seen influencers use their leadership for harm. Yeah. Not necessarily good, but then that's binary. So whatever the word is there. <laughs> um, yep, yep. I'd love to hear from you, Tommy. Yeah. Hey, Rebecca, or I would say I think it's complicated in the sense that I think we're dealing with forces that are deeply human um, and all that. So a, a leader still wants to be belong and be loved and accepted. And so does celebrity and the horrendous nature of our culture is that we celebrity right and influencer we we put curated pieces of people's lives out there for people to consume and exploit yes and pick apart and we expect that not to have an embodied reaction or response to that and often that embodied reaction and response is to double down on whatever 
the behavior is or to fawn into a particular behavior that that ultimately proves harmful right and so i think instead of just naming the like the thing that's happened the, the 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 culture of it or the, the white supremacy like getting to the body of what's happening like what's happening in, in mm. people's bodies might help us to shift the environments yeah. that exist or or at least sh- create some pockets that operate differently that that but still um and i think we have that with co co-leadership co-facilitation like right we're, we're moving yeah. in those directions but yeah i start there from that place of like what's going on in our bodies oh, i love that in, in it, you're going to somatics that's 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 i think that's what's missing mm-hmm. from the work tommy Someone asked me today, if I could rewrite my book again, what would I write about? Somatics mm. and the repair of the future. Because you do, there mm. is wisdom in the body and we do need to get to know the body. What's the body telling us outside of the big frameworks? Think, oh, that's, it's so much you just said that like my brain collected and I'm like, oh, that's so good. Let's go deeper. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, yes. This and this is why I love being in what I feel like is this developing collective of, of people sharpening each mm-hmm. other, asking the questions, um, figuring out, all right, I'm over here in this, doing this work. And like, but what do I need to know? And like, how do these parts talk to each other? Right. Um, it's, it's so beautiful to be in this space and time and watch that network start to emerge in and, 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 in yeah, this, today's think, iteration. Because I'm always thinking of like, what are we doing in the co-conspirators lounge that that's, what do we need to do? And not just the lounge, but also in our life to be connected to ourselves. And I just started thinking about somatics, right? Like a lot of people don't know me, this about me, but I finishing up my breathwork facilitator certification. And we don't even know about like the power of breath and how breath can connect us in the most, overwhelming circumstances so that just came from just hearing you talk about like you know iron and sharpening iron and you're bringing like this process of body and how I feel like I'm coming alive because it's so true you know it's it's it's, I think that's the reason why I can sit and have a conversation with Trump supporters because I'm in my body and I'm just at a space where I'm like huh curiosity what does curiosity feel like in my body Tommy it's calm it's engaging, it's thoughtful, it, it's it's like a yeah. free flow because I'm not getting ready to cast judgment. I'm just listening, hearing a different perspective. And I can do that in a way that I'm in mm. my body, that it's free flowing, that it's not tight or tense. Like I'm actually like, touching. for those of you who are listening, I'm actually touching my arms and parts of my body because Tommy, you just took me to a place that's like, if I could be reminded that every day, Tommy, like, are you in your body? Tommy, you should have daily text messages. What's happening in your body? Are you in your body? And I'm like, no, I'm doing what you recommend. Seriously. Like, <laughs> I think that would be... <laughs> I'm laughing. So, okay. Y'all know David, <laughs> season one, season two. It's dear friend, we're doing some work at Watershed. And apparently I came up in a meeting and the question was, well, they in channeling Tommy, how does that feel in your body? <laughs> so I feel like that's very <laughs> on brand. <laughs> I I should stop fighting it and just be like, yeah, yeah, like this 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 hits this hits in me like i love talking about embodiment i love like the nurse it just all hits it so you yeah, could have a patreon my too. Vibe, but <laughs> I, I receive I'm that you, I receive if you have that. a patreon add it, <laughs> it does it does but they do they do well it is time for me to do my self-care it's very important yeah 
Thank yes, you for today's conversation. Yes. So, oh um, God, thank you. Oh, y'all. Wow. What a joy. What a joy. Yeah, I'm about to go do what, what did you call it? The genogram. Yeah. The so genogram. you like your both parents go as high as you remember, aunts, uncles, marriages, and just start writing it, starts looking for the patterns. You're going to be like, oh, something that you usually do in therapy. So the way I'm saying it is probably not the way a therapist would do it. But it's like a pictogram. It's great. Yeah. You say it in a way the masses yes. will get it, though. So it's, it's all good. How can people interact? <laughs> How can people interact with Heal Your Way Forward and you and your essence and really grab the benefits of this? Um, I need to go read it now so that I can be yeah. in community with this book as well. And this, You're this gift. Thank you so much. I think much. folks can, right, of course, buy the book. It's got journal <laughs> prompts in it. So you can like really work through the content. Oh, you just come to the Cocos Wires Lounge. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Check your uh, show yes, notes. Thank y'all. We'll see y'all thank later. You. Mm-hmm. Thank you for joining us on Permission to Be. You can learn more about today's guests by going to permission to be podcast.com. We are also on all the social medias. You can find us on Instagram and Facebook at permission to be podcast or Twitter at permission to underscore B. We would love to hear from you and let us know who you might want to have on as our next guest. If you will leave us a rating and review in your review, you can put the name of people or persons who you think might be a great guest for the permission to be podcast. We hope you have a wonderful day.